I have to get something off my chest that's been bothering me for a while. It turns out that many of the Linux commands that I've been promoting are totally useless. I got so excited about these Linux commands that I didn't stop to realize that many of them are just legacy relics from the mainframe era. The unexpand command? What was I thinking? It doesn't even undo what the expand command does. The tack command to reverse files? It doesn't even work on binary files. So over the past year, I've published over 100 YouTube shorts about almost every core utils command at this point. And at this point, I think I'm very qualified to start talking about the flaws that you need to watch out for in these tools. To start off with, I think it's worth thinking about where all of these commands came from. As you saw in a lot of my videos, many of these commands date back to the 1970s. And as you can see here, there are multiple different parallel lineages. And of course, many of these are from the Unix family of operating systems. And of course, that chaotic mess of operating systems created the need for some sort of consistency. So then came along the POSIX standard to create a portable operating system interface. And that's why you hear me mention it in so many of my videos. Of course, not all core utils commands are in the POSIX spec. Some of them are just useful utilities that have been around since forever that people have come to rely upon. One example would be the factor command. According to this page, core utils has existed since 2003. And as you can see here, core utils was created from a combination of file utils, shell utils, and text utils. And if you clone the public repo for core utils from GitHub, you can actually check the commit history back as far as 1992. The first commit looks like it was on October 31st, 1992. Now I said that some of these commands are effectively useless, and I think that the unexpand command is a good example. So the idea with the expand command is that you could take a piece of text with uh, tab separated columns, and you could format it to look better. So something like this. And as you can see, there's spaces added to make the columns look nicer. And the idea of the unexpand command is that in some cases you can use it to undo the work of the expand command. And visually here, you can see that it gets pretty close. But if you run this through of m command, you can see that there are some white space differences. So generally speaking, I'd say the expand or unexpand commands are pretty good candidates for being replaced by a Python script. Another one that I thought was pretty weird was the cSplit command. So the idea with this command was you would split a text file based on some certain context. And from the documentation, it looks clear that it was designed to work specifically on text files. It also has its own fairly non-standard way of describing repetition. It almost looks to me like this command was designed right around the time when they were first inventing the first modern regular expressions. And that's another thing too, is that the class of regular expressions that this command supports is going to be very primitive. So it doesn't say anywhere, but I'm going to bet that this thing supports POSIX basic regular expressions, which are fairly primitive if you don't know what those are. I also found a lot of the use cases for this command to be very awkward. So for example, this command is supposed to split a file based on line numbers, but in practice, if you try to use it, the first file has n minus one lines, then n lines, then n lines, and the last file will have the remainder. And most likely, this is not what you want. You probably wanted uh, equal amounts in all the files except for the last one. So when I see stuff like this, based on how complicated this command is to use, I would probably just elect for a Python script. Now another weird command is the tack command, and tack is C-A-T spelled backwards, so the opposite of the cat command. Initially, I did think this was a neat little command until I saw this example and decided to actually try it. I actually wrote some test cases to try it out, and that's when I discovered these examples. So in this case here, tack does reverse the bytes, but in this case, it does not. And if I recall correctly, this problem only happens for the last two bytes of the file. And that's a pretty big issue if you plan to use this on binary files. Now I don't know why that happens, but I suspect that it has something to do with characters that are over 0x80. My guess is that TAC was originally designed to work only on text files. So when you include binary characters that are over 0x80, it must be getting confused about non-ASCII characters. Or maybe this could even be a bug, I'm not really sure. Either way, given how simple this operation is, the fact that it gets it wrong in this case makes me want to not use this command ever again. I think there's a tendency to assume that these really old tools are extremely stable and well tested. But the fact that I didn't find anything else written about this subject makes me question that assumption. The next weird command is the nl command for numbering lines in a file. The default use of this command works pretty well if your file doesn't have any blank lines. However, this example here illustrates the problem. Now you can fix that by adding this flag, but this is a very non-standard way of providing options, and I'm guaranteed to forget this. And it also has this very unusual and obscure notation for denoting sections in a file. And as you can see, you can get really crazy with the options to NL. When I look at this, it makes me think that the NL command was probably designed for punch cards. The next obsolete one is the PR command. So what this does is take a piece of text, and it annotates it for printing, and if this text was longer, it would have separated this into uh, multiple pages. And as you can see here, you can also do uh, things like columns, 
When I see this, it almost makes me think that the PR command was at one time used for rendering newspapers or magazine articles. And in relation to the video, I know a lot of people like this one. I got a couple emails about this. I think it's kind of funny that it's actually easier to do a good video about these kind of useless commands. Because the command isn't really useful, I can kind of just have fun with it. But if I have a command that's actually useful, I have to focus on the useful features of the command. I don't really have any time for story. One of the next commands that you'll probably never have a need for is the ptx command. This is the command for creating permuted indexes. So that is useful for creating indexes for manuals such as the one in the original Unix documentation. It was actually hard to find documentation on how to even use this command. I was able to find some basic information in the info pages, but figuring out how to go all the way to a PDF document took a bit more research. The next command that I actually have mixed feelings about is the com command. The basic idea of being able to do these kinds of set operations directly on the command line with lines in a file, I think that's really powerful, and I think there's a really sore need for this. However, it wasn't until I published the video on this that I realized when you set the output delimiter to be nothing, then it doesn't actually use nothing as a delimiter, it actually uses a single null character. And it took me a long time to figure that out. And that's because if you print a null character to the terminal, you don't see anything. And the way I found this out was I was doing one of these com command set operations, and I was taking the output of that and piping it into another com command. So if you're just outputting this onto the terminal and copy pasting, you won't have a problem with that null character. However, if you take that output and pipe it into another com command, it won't be the same again because the existence of that null character on the end of the lines changes the input to the next com command. And again, this is one of those things where I don't know if it's a bug or if it's unspecified, undefined behavior, but the existence of issues like this makes me a lot less likely to use these commands in the future. Having said that, these set operations are so useful, I still actually do use the com command now and then. And of course, the other big issue with the com command is you have to sort the input first, and if you don't, the output can be wrong. And one final example of an obsolete command is the sum command. And from reading up on this command, it looks like it was probably one of the very first built-in checksum commands. Now it's worth asking, if these commands are mostly obsolete, why do we even keep them around? Well, I think the answer is probably simple. There's probably some 6,000 line shell script out there that was written 20 years ago, and nobody really wants to do the refactoring work that would be necessary to stop using these legacy commands. And realistically, there's no reason to. There's a huge amount of value in programming to an interface. If you can write a piece of code and have confidence that the exact same code will work perfectly in 60 years from now, that makes what you're doing a lot more powerful. And realistically, this small number of old commands can be kept around in core utils basically forever. They only take up a few kilobytes of space anyway. And even if we did get rid of them, someone might have the temptation to introduce a new sum command that actually adds numbers. And then someday someone would write a script that used the sum command, and it would work two completely different ways on different computers. And that would be a nightmare to debug. Some other commands that seem to exist just for backward compatibility are the dir command, which is really just this ls command, or the vdir command, which is just this ls command, and another one that I reviewed recently was the printenv command. And as I mentioned in the other video, the printenv command is for printing environment variables, but it was just from a different lineage of the Unix history. And because at one time people used either printenv or env, it was eventually decided to just support both. And it's worth talking about why you would not want to use some of the core utils commands in general. So if you look at the tr command, you can see in the documentation here it says currently tr fully supports only single byte characters. And then it says eventually it will support multi-byte characters. I would not hold your breath on that statement. It's pretty much a running theme with all of the core utils commands that they are not Unicode aware. I think a lot of the mentality that went into the design of these early applications was that one byte equals one character forever. And if you're really looking for full support for Unicode, then I think you should look elsewhere outside of core utils. Another recurring issue with a lot of the core utils commands is that when they allow you to specify a regular expression, usually the only regular expressions that they support are basic regular expressions, which is not to be confused with extended regular expressions. And if you don't know what these two terms are, you're probably going to have a lot of unexpected surprises when you try to use regular expressions with these old tools. And it's actually kind of worse than this because you have to think about basic regular expressions, extended regular expressions, Perl compatible regular expressions, and all of this stuff. So if you want to know why people find regular expressions confusing, this is why. Another way that these commands show their age is the recurring use of zero termination. So that was an issue we saw with the com command, where when you add a empty delimiter, it would actually add a null character at the end. And you can see here in the documentation for the com command, you can explicitly ask it to add zero termination, or null characters. And a similar thing exists for the sort command, and also the unique command, and a bunch of others. So I think the reason that this feature used to be important was because we used to do all of our programming in C, and if you want to import a file of delimited pieces of text, 
It would be really convenient in C if the strings were already null terminated in the file when you import it. Now, I started with the core utils commands because they are so fundamental and widely supported on many platforms. And I don't want to give you the idea that all core utils commands are useless, even though most of them are quite old. In fact, quite the opposite is true. Some of these commands, like the sort command or the wc command, are just so simple and so useful. And there are, of course, a few obscure core utils commands that are extremely useful, but I'll probably do a separate video talking about them some other day.